So while doing this capstone project, the most important point is to writing the points, every point, whatever we are discussing, every point is equally important. And uh, please take a note of that. And uh, here, whatever this capstone project is there, this entire capstone project is going to be implemented using the CRISP DM methodology. That is first one is business problem understanding followed by data understanding from their data preparation, modeling, evaluation and presentation. Okay, so for any project in data science should be implemented using the CRISPDM methodology. So while writing in the resume also you have to write this project was implemented using the CRISPDM methodology. And while uh, explaining to others, anyone, if anyone asks you, can you explain this project means you have to say the first thing is this project was implemented using CRISPDM methodology. Okay, now, so let us understand each and everything one by one very clearly and in the real life how we are going to process this one. Okay. Now, as I have observed in the last class, few students that is yesterday's class in the while working in the lab. So many offline students has commonly asked a few questions commonly, not only one or two commonly most of the students has asked the common questions that common questions also I'm going to address in the today's class. Okay. Now, first, let us start with the first one called as business problem understanding. So here, what is business problem understanding? This is the step one. The business problem understanding is dream housing finance company. Okay. This is one of the finance company, which deals all kinds of home loans They are dealing with the different, different kinds of home loans. They have presence across the urban areas. Their, their housing loans are with respect to urban areas semi-urban areas and roller areas. They will give the house loans in different areas. Point is important. They have the presence across urban, semi-urban and roller areas. This point is going to be important. Okay. Customer first applies for the home loan and after that company validates the customer eligibility for loan, whether this person is eligible or not. It is not loan approval. It is eligibility criteria. So they are eligible or not. Company wants to automate the loan eligibility process. They want to automate this one. Everything should be automated to based on the customer details provided while filling online application form. The details are gender, marital status, that is marriage or not, and education, number of dependents, income, loan amount, credit history, and others, something. Now, to automate the pro this process, they have provided a data set to identify the customer segments that are eligible for a loan amount so that they can specifically target these people. Only the whether they are checking whether they are eligible for the loan or not. So this data was collected from the Kaggle and this problem also collected from the Kaggle and this is a Kaggle competition uh, site. So this is the loan eligibility prediction, whether they are eligible for the loan or not. And here we are having the details like this, whatever the context, business context and about the uh, each and every column detail is available here. Okay. Now coming to the point. Loan eligibility status uh, criteria is different and uh, next one is giving the loan is different. Eligibility criteria means you are eligible and uh, after eligibility, they're going to collect the application form from you and from there, they'll process the things further, furtherly and they'll approve the whatever the amount. Here, they are checking whether you are eligible for the loan or not. Now, I think everyone are having the phone pay with you. I assume. Now, just uh, in our mobile phone, just open the phone pay. On the phone pay, starting, starting, you will find on the front page itself. Open. Everyone open your mobile phones. Let's see live application. In the phone pay, first page, open, open page only, starting itself. Have you found any kind of Navi personal loan on the top? Some slides are moving off on the top. On the phone pay on the top. Is anything slides are moving in that any first one is there with respect to loan first one or second one slide move, move that one right side or left side. If you move one side, you will find the loan personal loan board. Click on that. 
don't apply only click on that okay after clicking on that now it is going to ask you the certain details okay it is going to ask you the certain details and if it is navi assume if it is navi personal loan it will be redirect to the navi website or it will ask you to download the navi application and once you have entered the details there and you are going to get all the information and you are going to fill the information and after filling all the information it is going to cross check and it will give the loan maximum within a half half an hour you will get the loan maximum time is half an hour in half an hour you will get credited directly in the bank account only in half an hour only bank account also will be completed they have done everything with respect to automate if you call to the customer care there will be one mobile number also i mean landline number if you call to the customer care also they will say that sir nothing is in our hand you have to enter everything in the online only nothing is there in their hand if you want after the class you call them don't call now okay after the class check now what they have done they are collecting the information yeah guys please now close your mobile phones completed just to observe the application uh, of today's one so there you are going to fill this one and in that multiple things are involved in that uh, how much loan eligibility you are having for that loan eligibility regression all got them and uh, whether you have to accept the loan or to reject the loan that is again classification problem before to that eligibility criteria it is going to check the eligibility criteria and you are going they are going to say that you are eligible for the loan first you will get one statement like that and next list later it will be saying that you are eligible for the loan and uh, please enter the following details and upload these documents and once everything was completed they will take half an hour for processing time and within half an hour you will get one message that your loan has got approved and they will credit the money in that okay I, every step by step i know because i have taken that right now uh, there it is going to ask with respect to the first initial step of uh, the details now here also the same way first i am going to load the data for that i required the this uh, libraries now before loading the data just everyone can you please confirm is that uh, business problem is clear whether you have to check whether the person is eligible for loan or not based on the input criteria you have to check whether the person is eligible for loan yes or no output variable is either he is eligible or he is not eligible yes or no so it is a binary classification problem business problem is clear right now uh, now i am going to load the data and i am going to take the head function whether i have loaded a correct data or not yes i have loaded the correct data now i am going to check how many records are there actually 614 records are there and these are the column names and each column name whatever the column names are, are there i am going to check otherwise i'll rename them if anything is not with respect to as per the syntax i will rename because in the further i should not get any kind of error in the starting starting only i will rename them uh, as per the syntax wise so first column name and every column name i am observing all the column names are as per the syntax that is clear now let's move on to the second step of the crispdm methodology that is data understanding now here loan id unique loan id every person who will apply he will have the unique loan id gender whether the person got married dependents number of dependents education self employed whether the applicant is self employed and uh, applicant income co applicant income loan amount loan amount term credit history credit history means whether the this credit history meet the guidelines means whether he is having a good credit history or bad credit history he is having previously a very good credit history is there or bad credit history is there like vijay malya he is a defaulter for any of the banks or he has repaid the loans on time everything whether it is a good credit history or bad credit history right now next one is property area because it is a housing loan na so in which area you are selecting the house is also important here selecting the house in urban area is different selecting the house in the rural area is different both are not same now here the most important point once again is business problem understanding here 
that data cleaning, whatever that entire data cleaning is there, that depends on your business problem. Based on the business problem, you are going to do the data cleaning, data wrangling. Now, here we have to consider this one as dummy variables. Whatever the property area is there, that should be considered as dummy variables. Uh, that has to be considered as ordinal variable. Uh, that will be decided based on the business problem. If business problem says that this is normal variable, it is one of the variable like that, then it should be considered as nominal. Selecting the house in urban areas versus rural areas and the cost and the eligibility criteria will be different. So now, if you apply for any house loan to a bank, now assume that reality, now you only assume that you have went to the bank, okay, nearest bank and you have asked for a housing loan. First question they are going to ask, what is the property value? What, I mean, house value, what are the house value you are going to purchase? For that house value, what is the expected loan amount? What is the loan amount you are looking for? House value is 1 crore. You are looking for a loan amount of 80 lakhs. What is your salary? Your salary is 1 lakh. Okay. House loan, a uh, house value is, I am writing house value as 1 crore. House loan you want is, you require loan amount. Required loan amount. Required loan amount is, you are asking for 80 lakhs. Okay. And, what is your salary? Salary is 1 lakh. Now, the person is going to say, Sir, for your 1 lakh salary, you, you are eligible up to 60 lakhs only. You are not eligible for 80 lakhs as per the uh, bank policy. Any person in that, whatever the 60% six, uh, of the salary will be considered into 100 times will be given with respect to housing loan, which is a tenure of 20 years. That is as per the uh, bank policy. If you want, you can cross verify. Okay. After the class, you can check with the banks. Just you give your phone number in any one of the housing loan uh, website. Just you give the phone number, they'll call you and they'll ask some details. Just observe what are the details they're collecting from you. Okay. Now, here 1 lakh, uh, if the person is having 1 lakh and he's asking for 80 lakhs, generally they are not eligible. Now, what they are going to say but at the time is, sir, uh, instead of you, Okay, not only you, is other friend, if there is any one of your relative or your friend who is having some additional salary of 50,000 or 60,000, you both, if you combine, automatically you'll get that's 80 lakhs. So for example, uh, your, uh, for example, your wife is also working for gents, wife and for uh, girls, it is husbands. Okay, now they're working, your partner is also working. You both, if you apply, for example, one of them is earning 1 lakh, second person is earning with respect to 1 lakh, total 2 lakhs. This is co-applicant. Now, in this case, the eligibility criteria increases. For 1 lakh, one, one person only 60 lakhs means, obviously for 2 persons, it is 1 crore 20 lakhs. Now, but you are asking only for 80 lakhs. There is a high possibility your loan will be eligible in terms of. So, here they are collecting the income of the main person along with the income of the co-applicant. In some cases, for example, if you have not got married, there will be no partner or there is no friend who is interested to purchase that house simultaneously, means on the both the names. Then you are eligible for maximum of, for example, 60 lakhs. You are asking for 60 lakhs only. Now they want to automate the process. Already this number is okay, but still they want to automate the process and they want to cross-check whether this person is eligible. So now here we are having these are the details that is loan ID, gender, married, dependents, all these things. Now for the loan, for example, you are asking a loan of 60 lakhs. They asked you what is your income? You told that I don't know my income. What is the move? Uh, the moment you say that there is no salary or I'm not having the salary or I don't know what is my salary, immediately they'll stop the asking the next question also. Because waste of time. Based because the entire loan amount is dependent on your salary only. If your salary is 1 lakh means then 60 lakhs you are eligible. If your salary is 10,000 means no need to discuss about 60 lakhs loan amount also, right? Waste of time. So they will not even discuss. So income is going to play a major role in that. At the same time, your term, 
for example you have asked uh, for uh, within one year only i'm going to complete the 60 lakhs means from where you'll get so your salary is one lakh for 12 uh, 12 months 12 lakhs is your salary annual salary is 12 lakhs in one year only i will pay the entire 60 lakhs means from where you'll pay it is not possible 60 lakhs is the loan amount if you take minimum 20 years duration if you reduce the number of duration tenure term if you reduce the tenure term to 10 year, 10 months or sorry 10 years automatically your loan amount will be reduced automatically it will reduce okay so now if you are having any pre eligibility criteria okay everything i am having in my mobile if you are having in terms of anything like uh, everyone are having paytm right in the paytm also there is one option called as personal loan okay if you click on that automatically it will ask first initial details and based on the initial details first it will tell whether you are eligible or not okay try after the class after the class try paytm in the personal loan option will be there first you enter your details after entering your details just uh, it will ask basic details only just enter and you if you click it will show that whether you are eligible or not first it will show that eligible or not if you are eligible what is the money based on your credit history based on your pan card or other card or whatever it is it is going to tell whether you are eligible or not if you are eligible what is the amount and it will also show you how many months whether it is 24 months or 36 months or 48 months in terms of months wise it will show it will show in months now in the months whatever the months it is showing for you once the months are calculated and everything was done now later uh, once this is completed it will show the money for example you are eligible for 3 lakhs rupees assume and it is showing 24 months duration completed up to that eligibility criteria completed now later you are going to submit the documents later you are going to take the video kyc and you are going to show you your original pan card and uh, your photo and you are the person you are applying directly everything you are going to do all online and finally they'll approve that one and finally the amount will be created in your account that is the process so in this entire process the first step is checking whether you are eligible for the loan or not that is the first step after first step they'll tell the amount and if that amount is okay for you then you have to give your further documents what are the uh, other card photo is there that is xerox copy that you have to upload till that you are not going to upload till that you are going to give your details only proofs you are not going to submit later you are going to submit the proofs and they are going to validate that proofs and they are going to conduct some video kyc if it is online if it is offline the bank uh, executive will come and once the process is completed finally they will approve the loan and they will release the money in your bank account this is the step by step process in the banking industry for the loan is the points are clear this business problem understanding is more important for your data cleaning okay which column has to be deleted which column has to be done in what way everything will be done based on your business problem understanding a proper business understanding is required sir i don't know about the loans we are freshers just now in this year only we have completed our btech we don't know anything just apply give a try okay for giving a try nothing is required right you are not going to take the loan i am not saying that after that everything was completed take the loan with a high interest rate also you take the loan i am not saying i am asking just to apply only once you are eligible and they have given the eligibility criteria everything was done stop there only okay i am not saying that uh, please take the loan and uh, repay the loan every month pay the emi and uh, you if do uh, waste your money by spending shopping i'm not saying anything like that i'm just asking to apply and check how the process will be done till the last step you do the process but at the last you don't sign on the agreement and don't take the loan so that you'll understand completely you'll understand lively you can understand Sir, why we have to do, sir? In the companies also, we'll do like this only. Na? No, in the companies, domain expert will be there. He'll explain for you. Like how I'm explaining now for you. In the meeting, they'll explain. I don't know about the loan. I have never applied. Miss, he'll say that. So first page, you'll get like this. He'll show some PPT. In the first page, you'll get like this. After that, you'll get like this. After that, you'll get like this. He'll explain with a PPT. 
in that he will show for step by step process one by one everything he will explain that this is the step by step process where you will have and uh, he will take some sample example and he will explain the what is the step by step everything right now here coming to the data understanding that is second step of CRISPDM. We have understand till now business problem only. Now we are moving on to the second step of uh, da uh, data understanding where the loan ID as everyone's loan ID is different. So we are going to drop this particular column. There is no use. Next one is gender. What are the unique values means male and female in your data along with some null values. And what are the value counts means value counts are different. Unique values are different. So in the value counts, you are going to observe that males are more. So generally housing loans will be applied morely in real life also males will apply more comparatively, right? Now uh, married, whether the person got married or not. And if you check their value counts, most of the married people will take the housing loans, right? And uh, dependents here, we can see the number of dependents. What is dependents? First, what is dependents? So here you have to check what is dependence means it is number of dependents. Now, again, what is dependence means how many people are depending on your salary on you in the house? How many people are depending? Okay. How many people are depending on you with your salary or with you? How many of them are depending? Not with respect to relation wise or emotion wise. Emotion wise, your relatives also will be dependent. Not that one. Only with respect to your salary in the house, how many are getting dependent? Right now here, in terms of uh, the value counts, if you see the value counts, these are the value counts. And here is a wrong data is there. That is three plus. We have to write that one in the notes. In the dependents, there is a wrong data that is three plus. And number of dependents should be int because it is how many. Basically, it is a discrete count variable, but is in the string format. It is in the wrong data type. These two points we have to write in the notes and that we have to do in the data cleaning. Whatever we have observed now that we have to do in the data cleaning. In each now itself you can do now miss maybe the next one, how it is correlated. We don't know now. Now itself we can't do based on the next point, something will get and we may have to apply the cross tab. We have to do some kind of analysis and they better later. We have to do the modification. We don't know now. So now itself, don't decide anything. First, observe. Is the points are clear? So what is the point you have to write in the notes is number of dependents is number of. It is a discrete count variable. Basically, it should be in the int format, but in the given data, it is in the string format. And data type has to be modified. Point number one. Point number two. There is one wrong data type, a wrong value, which is called as three plus. And this has to be modified. These two points we have to write in the notes. While doing the project in the real life, we, we have to keep one note side with us. Every point, whatever we are observing, we have to write. Either in the Jupyter notebook, we have to write. Either in the notes, we have to write. Everything, if you write in the Jupyter notebook and if you share it to your seniors, directly you should not share your knowledge like that. You should not make as simple as like that. Right here, I'm explaining for you. I'm the teacher and you are the students. Tomorrow you are working. He is not your student to explain like that uh, spoon feed it. Right. You should not disclose all your uh, plus points, how you are going to uh, clean the data and where you are going to do which one. You should not explain everything. Just what is the work you have done? You have to share it. That's it. Okay. Now, education, what are the unique values of education Miss graduate, not graduate and uh, coming to value counts with respect to many of them are graduates and uh, self-employed SR knows and missing values and most of them are salaried persons. No, not self-employed Miss their salaries. The meaning is salaried. Either self-employed or salaried. Two will be there. S or no. Right. And uh, income applicant income. Now, what are the column names are there? Write all the column names in the notes. Each and every column. That is apart from the loan ID, write everything in the notes. One by one. First one is gender, married, dependents. Like that, you write everything in the notes. Continuously, you have to write in this class notes.
what are the things you have observed in the gender column that one also you have to write later you have whatever you have observed that one you have to write like that everything what are the things you are observing everything you have to write in the notes either in the notes or in the jupyter notebook in the real life don't write anything in the jupyter notebook don't give the see here i have given the business problem understanding heading and in that i am writing and later i am writing the headings and uh, what are the column names like i'm giving some kind of uh, like this and i'm giving every notes whatever the previous notes as whatever you have observed also i have given the notes and uh, on the top i have given the elbow curve like this but remember in the real life while you are doing the project please don't keep the headings in the company if you are practicing on your own keep the headings that is for your understanding but in the companies don't do anything like that just share what are the work you have done if everything if you open your plus points later without you also they will continue with the work everything is open na so they they will understand everything how you are going to do your brain you have open directly na your entire brain you have kept there and you have open entire notes so what way of your processing and what way of your understanding in what way you will do everything you are opening then what is the use of you initially there might be no problem but when you are senior level your salaries will be very high at that time if you open everything instead of you they'll try to replace with another person who is with low salary right sir what is the other option for a, if you want any other option for example let us take like this in my case okay this is the one which i am working jupyter notebook i am going to copy this one jupyter notebook file and i am going to paste this one this copy in this copy i will remove the headings in the original one i'll keep the headings in the copied version i will remove the headings and i will share it to the others both are same only na that one and this one both the two copies right so in the main one jupyter notebook main one i will keep the headings because in the future i will again open and i have to understand myself na i will forget otherwise where this notes will be there that two running notes na so this running notes may not be available with me so i will keep this one with me the copied version i am going to share it to the others while sharing to others i am going to remove all the headings and everything directly only directly answer whatever i have done for getting that answer whatever the techniques i have applied nothing i will disclose points are clear remember they are not the students you are not the teacher in this case different there it is different right now so these are the column names you have written right so first gender gender is clear what is the second column name married that is also clear number of dependents done education done self employed now first gender side to gender write whether it is a what type of variable side to gender write the variable type in the notes after your observation write the side notes gender what is the gender discrete categorical it is a categorical variable simply write categorical married categorical number of dependents what is this type of variable count variable it is a count write that one next education in the order next one is education education is graduate not graduate it is a categorical right categorical self employed whether it is a categorical right again categorical next after that what is the next column applicant income now you open the applicant income what are the unique values are there so these many unique values are there that too we already know income miss it is a money money comes under continuous right continuous your observation at the same time continuous right next coming to co applicant income co applicant income also it is a continuous variable 
next up loan amount this is also money again it is also a continuous variable first you are observing and based on your observation you are going to write what are the loan amount this is in terms of thousands of dollars whatever the number you are seeing it here 120 or 141 or 267 or 128 what are the number you are seeing it is in the thousands of dollars how you know it is thousands of dollars means that was given in the starting itself in this where the loan amount is in thousands thousands of dollars right now next one is after loan amount uh, loan amount term term means how many months they have given clearly it is months how many months so what are the unique values are there means 360 months 360 months means 30 years 120 months means with respect to 10 years 240 months 20 years 180 months 60 months 30 months like this in terms of months they have given right now next what are the value counts value counts many of the people are applied for the 30 years loan because generally house loan means 20 years to 30 years loan in india it is 20 years in america it is 30 years in us right and uh, credit history whether it is what type of variable it is a count variable right that one count variable next credit history whether this person is having a good credit history or a bad credit history basically they have given one and zero which was already encoded but actual thing is one indicates good zero indicates bad so what i'm going to do means for my understanding i'm replacing also i'm replacing one with good and a, a zero with bad and again i'm going to check my unique values good and bad is there for me clarity is important later i will do once again encoding but first i require clarity for clarity i require like this i will write like this whatever happens happens okay so I'm going to modify. Actually, I have observed some of the students, zero and one, uh, zero and one. They have felt whether again it is a discrete variable or count variable. They have confused. Based, uh, you have to understand credit history means whether this person is having a very good credit hist good credit history or bad credit history. For making the eligibility criteria, credit history is going to play a major role. While you are applying the uh, loan in the apps that is Navi or Paytm don't open the worst fine uh, apps okay there are multiple apps are there in the play store please don't open them okay in your entire life please don't open them and if any of them is asking your contacts okay please approve the contacts or your photos just simply uninstall that application don't allow any kind of access for your contacts or your photos Pers privacy is important okay now so credit history is a good one or a bad credit history, either good or bad. Again, you are having in terms of text data. It is a categorical, again, categorical credit history comes under categorical. So what are the value counts are there? Goods are more, bads are less. Next property area. What are the property area miss urban, roller, semi-urban, categorical. Next value counts for each of them. What is the value counts? and uh, loan status whether yes or no and many of them has got accepted or rejected i mean eligible or not eligible miss many of them are eligible right now within this entire all the things you have observed now every column you have observed any column you have missed every column you have observed inside that what type of data is there you know now everything raw data was clear inside that what type of data is there you know now, from, from that, you are going to separate the continuous variables. That is applicant income, co-applicant income, loan amount. These three comes under continuous. Whatever you have written, just check. These three comes under continuous. Some categorical variables and count variables. Count variables are dependents and loan account term. Same thing. Loan ID, you have dropped anyways. Is that clear up to here? Now, this data, raw data was understood. What are the number of records are there? Miss 614 records are there. What are the columns? Miss these are the columns out of which three continuous variables and uh, two discrete variables and uh, seven categorical variables. Okay, three, two and this one. Now, categorical variables should be in the object data type. 
hundred percent they should be in the object. If not in the object, we have to modify. This one should be in the int type. This should be in terms of float type. Float or int. Float or int. Continuous can be float or int. But discrete will be always int. Fix. Categorical will be always object. Fix. These both are not going to change. But continuous variable, int might be, float might be. Your salary, income is there. 25,000, 35,000, 45,000. These numbers are there. Money always comes under category, uh, uh, continuous variable only. Though decimal values is there or not there also, it comes under continuous only. Is the point is clear, guys? Everyone up to here. Now, if you want to drop the loan ID, is uh, if you we don't drop the loan ID, what is the use of loan ID? Every person will have the same thing now. Every person will have the unique value, right? Now, coming to EDA, in the data understanding only, I'm in the step number two only. I have not even came to the step three of CRISPDM. I'm in the step two only, step two of the CRISPDM only. Still, I'm understanding my data properly. Now, as I have seen the for categorical variable, what are the value counts? I have observed for continuous variables, what I have to observe? Mean, median, and uh, with respect to standard deviation, all these things I have to observe. And how the histogram is there, I have to observe. Whether outliers are there, I have to observe. These are the things which I have to observe for the continuous variables. So now what I'm going to do means for continuous variables, I'm going to apply separately described function only for continuous. What are the continuous variables means? These are the continuous variables. What are continuous? Applicant income, co-applicant income, and loan amount. These are the continuous variables. For these three of them, it is going to apply the mean, standard deviation, minimum value, maximum value. Why, sir? Why all these things? Now, if you want to apply the log transformation, for co-applicant income, there is a minimum value of zero is there. Can you apply log transformation on zero? No. In that case, what we have to do is just we have to add 0 0.001. The same thing which I have explained during the data wrangling technique. In which case you have to do that one miss if the minimum value is zero. Only in that case. How we can know that minimum value is zero or not miss? Just by applying that describe. Now you are going to observe the income, applicant income, co-applicant income, loan amount. And now next histograms for three of them histograms by using the subplot one, subplot two, subplot three. By using the subplots, I have created three histograms. And along with the KD curve. Now in this, I can observe that it is a right skewed. From this right skewed, I can clearly understand that the applicant income who are having very high amount of income, they are less number of people who are having less income is more amount of people. That is my observation. Okay. Now here skewness. So everything was right skewed from this histograms. Everything are right skewed. Same thing. I'm going to check skewness also. 6.35. 7.49, 2.67. So three of them are right skewed. Now I'm not going to do the data wrangling. I have observation only. Everything observation only. Data preparation I have not started. Only data understanding only. I'm in the part of data understanding only. I'm understanding my data clearly. For continuous variables, I am understanding clearly by using the pair plot. And I'm going to observe the scatter plot and all these things. This histogram preparation is nothing but subplot one. PLT dot subplot. I have divided total three subplots I required. Plot one, plot two, plot three. One comma three means total three subplots out of which the first subplot I am using the histogram. In the second subplot also I am using the histogram. In third subplot also I am going to use the histogram. I already explained during the mat plot link. Right? Next, coming to this pair plot. Now, pair plot also applied only on the continuous variable, not on the discrete variable. None of the discrete variable is there. Only uh, continuous variables are there. Right? Next, coming to next one is heat map. That is correlation. That too, again, I have taken only for con continuous variables. Only for continuous variables, I have applied the heat, that is correlation matrix. Not for the discrete variable, not entire data. I have taken exclusively for continuous variables. I have separated continuous variables. For that, I have separately executed the correlation matrix. And this is the correlation matrix which I have got for these three variables. And I have observed there is a correlation 
between the applicant income versus loan amount is high. So as more applicant you are having income, your eligibility criteria will be more and you will select that, that uh, same house price. If your salary is 1 lakh, your interest will lies with uh, 50 lakhs, uh, 50 to 60 lakhs or 70 lakhs uh, house. If your budget is 25,000 only, monthly salary is 25,000, you will think about 25 lakhs to 30 lakhs uh, house. If your salary is monthly 5 lakhs, you will think about 5 crores property or 1 crore, 2 crores, 3 crores properties. You will not go with the 25 lakhs property, right? If your monthly salary is only 5 lakhs, means. Same way. And now for categorical variable, categorical variable, I am applying the describe function. For categorical variable also, I have got separately. For what are the unique values are there in each of them? And uh, so that these unique values will make me to understand whether what type of encoding I have to apply. Okay. Now, again, I'm going to take the count plot for each of them. Again, subplots. Total, how many variables are there? That many subplots I'm going to create. And this is with respect to their counts, count plots. Everything is count plot. What are the number you are seeing here in the value counts? This is plotting. For each of them, plots. For each variable. I have created just subplots. In each subplot, I have given one one. Instead of giving everything in a separate, separate cell, I have kept everything in a single one. All the categorical variables, plots, I have kept in a single point. Now, once this is completed, now I'm going to start the data preparation. Up to here, you have understand your data only. Now, the entire data, you are having a clarity, which are continuous variables, which are right skewed, which are left skewed, which are normal distributed, and which is having minimum value, what is the maximum value, what is the mean value. All these things, you are having a clarity on that. And for each of them, now here you have applied the describe for this one. Here, mode also, you know, for the discrete variables. For each discrete variable, which is the mode. So, this is the mode. Whichever the top column is there, this is the mode for each of them. So mode also ready for the discrete variables. Mean and median are ready for the continuous variables. In the describe function, you are having the mean mean values and you are having the median values. Is the points are clear? And you want to see the outliers also, whether outliers are available. That is also for continuous variable only. So you are going to check even for your outliers. So check the outliers for even for the continuous variables. This is also for continuous variables. So whether outliers are available. So what are the out, what are the options you are having in the outliers? Total three of them are there. What is the first one? Which is uh, nothing but uh, applicant income. You are having the first one is called as applicant income. So where is this applicant income? Copy. The first one is applicant income, apply the box plot. And the next one is uh, 132. And for this uh, next one is uh, co-applicant income. Co-applicant income. Co-applicant income. Next one is 1 comma 3 comma 3, which is nothing but loan amount. So I'm going to check for three of them. The what is the box plot? 1 comma 3 comma 3. Okay. So these are so three columns are having outliers. Same thing I'm going to write in the notes. What are the observation I have made? Three columns are right skewed, three columns are having outliers. Every observation of the raw data was completed. With this data understanding is completed. Now we are moving on to the data preparation. Next one is data preparation. Now income. In the income, we are going to focus on the income, whether it is a single income or two incomes or three incomes. Totally it is called as income. Whether the co-applicant is there also, income is added. So finally, I'm going to create one new column called as income column, which is a combination of applicant income plus co-applicant income. What are the co-applicant is having that income also I'm including so that it is an income column. Income, loan amount and whether eligible or not. 
ओके इनकम इनकम इंक्लूड्स मेन एप्लीकेंट इनकम एट द सेम टाइम को एप्लीकेंट इनकम ऑल्सो सो आई एम गोइंग टू क्रिएट ए न्यू कॉलम सर वाई यू आर क्रिएटिंग ए न्यू कॉलम यू कैन कीप एस्ट इज द सेम कॉलम ना so the loan eligibility is not only dependent on the main applicant income it is also dependent on the co applicant income so eligibility criteria is depending on that it is taking overall what is the income for example if you are working in the uh, loan you are going to see that uh, may, this person is having 1 lakh and this person is having 50 so overall 150 1 one, 1 lakh 50000 so we can provide this much of loan so overall 1 lakh 50000 you are saying overall you are saying or individually you are saying overall this much of salary overall this much of income for this much of income this much of loan they required so that is the reason i am going to combine that so how you can know this one how you know that you have to combine or not that is the most important question yesterday multiple students has asked this question for me means not only this from data preparation only many students are confused in the data preparation okay now i am focusing more on the data preparation that here data preparation is completely depend on the business problem step by step gender column what are the columns are there each column in your mind it has to be there for that reason only i ask you to write okay and what is the connection to their loan if you are female your salary is very high are you not eligible since you are female no there is no like that nothing like that like a number of dependents or with respect to the self employed or salary here whether you are self employed or whether you are this one or that one everything is okay finally what is the amount you are in having your salary is 50000 and you are asking 50 lakhs means it is difficult if your salary is 50000 and you are asking with respect to some kind of 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs means okay this is housing loan not the personal loan again personal loan criteria is different housing loan criteria is different what is the maximum number of years per personal loan is 5 as per the banks indian banks policy it is 5 the maximum for a housing loan it is 20 years for a vehicle loan any car loan it is 7 years for car loan 7 years then 7 years they will not give if you ask also they will not give the maximum tenure is 7 years they all these things how you know sir miss you have to check that is business problem understand you have to check all these things then you will have a that is uh, generally in the real life everyone will say that experience data scientist required some experience miss because they'll not have a, that much of knowledge on their business problem experienced data scientist will have more command on the business problem okay so if you want to become as more experienced person you have to do more amount of research on your business problem you have to understand what type of loans are there in the uh, things and uh, how these loans are varies and uh, what are the different criteria for each type of loan for example uh, gold loan is that the criteria is entirely different for gold loan the criteria is entirely different your salary you are not a working professional also no problem your income is zero from morning to evening you will eat and you will sleep also no problem they'll simply take your gold and they'll give the money on that but the same thing for personal loan they will not give the criteria for personal loan is different the criteria for gold loan is different so this criteria is for housing loan so you have to see for housing loan and what are the criteria and what type of in the google you have to check what are in india what are the companies which will provide the housing loans just type that one in the google you list list of companies in that open any one of the company don't open the company which you are not familiar with open the company at least which you are familiar with state bank of india will be there hdfc bank will be there something will be there that which you are familiar open those websites only some kind of uh, new names are there don't open that one open only the standard one which you are familiar with and uh, work accordingly now here i'm going to combine the income how am i combining miss based on the business problem the point what i want to say is business problem so from business point of view i have combined these two and later i'm modifying i have already written the point that in the uh, dependent variable there is a wrong data i have to do the data cleaning so that data cleaning i'm doing here 3 plus i'm going to convert to 3 why 3 only sir 4 you can write na 3 plus means 4 also na just now i am going to see the value counts what are the value counts are there and what are the unique values are there 
and here in the unique values of this one when i have observed the dependence the what are the unique values are there 0 1 2 is there after that 3 is not there 3 plus if i convert directly to 4 where is 3 then so now i have to convert to 3 or 3 4 or 3 that i am going to understand here miss any person who are having 3 also they are saying as 3 plus simply they are saying as 3 including the 3 if your age is 60 plus 60 plus means 60 and 60 and above 60 plus everything can be converted to 60 because you are concerned as senior citizen. 72, 74, 76, everything comes under same category. Senior citizen category. 60 and above. Automatically 60 also included in that senior citizen category. So similarly here also 3 plus. Here already 3 is there separately. 3 plus is there separately means 3 plus I will convert as 4. That you have to observe the data. Without observing the data I can't say that one. Blindly, I am not going to say that 3 plus means 4. Observe the data. In the data, already 3 is there separate. One of the category 3 is there. 3 plus is one more category. Two categories are there separate separately. Then 3 plus you have to convert to 4. Point is clear. You have to come back and you have to check that one. Or whatever the notes you have written, you have to observe that one. In the notes, whatever the things you have observed. Right? Now, coming back here, I am going to change this one to 3. Reason is clear. Everything. Next, uh, I'm going to check the missing values. What are the missing values are there? Now, missing values here in the missing values, income, any person's income is not there means I can't predict the loan. Without giving the income, we can't say that you are eligible or not eligible. One of the most important that one. In that, if missing values are there miss, we can't decide. That is important. Loan amount, what loan amount you are looking for? This loan amount, loan amount term, income. These three of them. Now, credit history. Credit history, whether the person is having a good credit history or bad credit history. Here, the person is having previously some credit history or not. Yes, previously some history is there or not, miss. Then the answer is, uh, if they have not filled that one, we can say clearly that no history is there. For example, I am going to ask, have you ever taken any loan? I ask you a question. Okay, in the application form, I ask you the question, have you ever taken any loan? You have not filled that one. What is the meaning of that? You have not taken the loan. Or here I asked you, how many number of loans you are having till now? Present. As of now? As of now. How many loans? And you have not filled that one. What is the meaning of that? Zero. Automatically it is zero. If you are not filled, miss zero. So here you are having a good credit history or bad credit history that we can't decide. You are having a by default good only, by default bad, we can't decide. So simply I'm going to ignore this one also. So I'm going to drop NA which are related to income. In the income anything is missing values are there means I'm dropping that one. I don't want that. So just here, is there any income missing values are there? income no missing values but if unfortunately one missing data is there also i don't want to consider that one income loan amount loan amount term and credit history these four we should not replace okay we should not replace these four in this case we have to go with the drop any directly okay now if you are working in the bank then you are going to ask Using that loan ID, whichever the missing data is there, unique loan IDs will be there now. Using that loan ID, you are trying to collect the original data and you will try to replace. If you are working in the bank, miss, try to collect the original data using the loan ID. Type that. Uh, so if you share the, sir, uh, see this uh, income and uh, loan applicant and these are the missings I'm having. For these are the loan IDs. For a loan ID number of uh, ID number 001. 0001 his name is srk and whatever the loan amount he has taken it is missing can you please provide if you send a mail you will get a reply they'll check with respect to that loan id and the bank will check that one and they'll send a reply sir if it is one record okay 10 records miss following records following data is missing following data is missing 
please provide the original data and you are going to send the loan id numbers and what are the things are missing you are going to keep like this how this one will be created miss one excel sheet open one excel sheet in the excel sheet type the loan id numbers type with respect to that one which are is missing or in terms of uh, you can't type like that sir Mul sir 10 records miss we can type multiple records from where we'll type sir first you extract the data wherever these missing values are there first you extract the data and that data whatever you have got as a data frame to csv and it will be converted as csv file and that csv file you upload and you share it to the team and you ask the try to get the original data and you replace these three these four of them you should not replace in this case in this business problem these four of them you should not replace because if your person's income if you don't know average income you can't take direct because the loan amount loan eligibility is purely dependent on the income only for that one this you could not replace directly you can replace male or female. That is not a problem. If it is male also okay, female also okay. So that is not a problem. You can replace. But these things should, should not replace. How you can know that one miss? Business problem once again. Okay. So here I'm going to drop these particular uh, columns related missing values. And number of dependents. The person who has not filled the number of dependents. What is the meaning of no? Uh, he has not given the number of how many dependents are there for you miss? The person has not given the answer. What is the meaning of that? No dependents. There are no dependents. So it is simply zero. Zero dependents are there. He has not given the answer. And similarly coming to the gender, married and self-employed. These things I'm going to replace with the mode. And now all the missing values has been treated. The missing values was treated in this way. Blindly you should not replace the continuous variables with mean or median or blindly you should not do before doing that one the importance of that column you have to keep in the mind and how this one is related to output variable and based on that you have to is the point is clear next outliers now coming to the outlier statement as you already have observed three in, uh, columns are having outliers now a person is having with respect to high income are you going to change his income only now clearly you can observe here when you have made a plot so for high income people high loan amount also is there this person is having this much of income obviously he has got this much of this one so for his in your infosys company if you take the salaries of the data obviously outliers will be there narayana mutigaru will be in the outlier only obviously the founder of the infosys he will be in the outlier only Right. Even with respect to uh, uh, whoever the CEO or whatever the persons are there, they'll be outliers. Are you going to change their salary? No. So here, what we have to do is we have to retrain the data. We have to retrain the data. Now, as one of the student is asking, sir, marital status, if for example, the person was not married or married, anything is okay for getting the loan. If you married also, no problem. If you don't marry also, no problem. Just they're collecting the data only that one. Ask, uh, that is the reason I'm saying in the loan, if you ask any executive, the bank executive, sir, ask for a loan. And while asking the loan, if he will ask whether have you married, you say that, uh, just ask the question, if I got married, miss, are you going to give me additional amount? Are you going to approve the loan? Or if I'm married, means I am eligible for the loan. Just ask like this the question. If she says that, no, there is no dependency, sir. That nothing is like that. Just we want to take the information from you. That is normal only now. Then simply you can replace with the mode. Is the points are clear? Right? Now, once this is completed, now here in this case, what is the outliers we are going to do? We are not going to do anything. We are going to retrain the outliers as it is. We should not modify the outliers in this case. The income, whatever the income and whatever the loan amount is there for high income, high loan amounts will be there. So we are not going to retrain, we are not going to replace them or we are not going to modify them. We are going to retrain them as it is. We have to keep them as it is and we have to work. We should not modify the data. Right? Now coming to the encoding, after that encoding, 
So missing value statement completed, outliers are completed. Next one is data wrangling, data cleaning completed. Now data wrangling. Now you are going to do the data wrangling. And finally, the dependents, what are the dependents are there? You are going to convert as into type and loan amount term as into type. Because these both should be discrete count variables into type only. Now here, coming to the encoding, in the encoding, you can go with the dummies, you'll get the same answer. Either you can go with the map function. Choice is yours. Okay. So map function or with respect to any, uh, because you are having only two variables, even you can apply the label encoder also. In this case, you can go with the even label encoder because two, two only is there. If you go with one hot encoding also same answer, label encoding also same answer, or if you go with the ordinal encoding also same. Of course, we not do the ordinal encoding. Now in this case, gender, first gender, whether it is a nominal or ordinal. Nominal, nominal variable, nominal encoding. That is dummies, married, nominal or ordinal. Nominal, if a person got married means he's a great person and person who has not got married means, no, there is no a relation like that. Only we are going to say the person who has not got married, he is called as lucky person. Who has got married, he is unlucky person. Just as a joke wise. But uh, there is no relation between them. Next one is education. Coming to the education in terms of. So education, graduate and no gra non-graduate. Only two options are there. If you are having in terms of uh, four or five minutes, obviously it is an ordinal. If it comes, if more uh, categories are there, obviously it is an ordinal. Education is an ordinal variable, right? If you are having graduate, postgraduate, something like this, then obviously you have to take it as a ordinal variable and you have to do the ordinal encoding for this. Self-employed, in this again, two only is there. And property area. Now property area, roller, semi-urban and urban areas. This is not with respect to nominal. There comes under ordinal because housing loan in different, different areas, selection of the property, cost of the property, tax of the property, income of the property, selling of the property, everything will be different. If you are living in the areas, miss, there is no difference. Living in urban areas, living in the rural areas, no difference. But buying a property in rural areas, buying a property in urban areas is different. Staying is different, buying is different. If you are staying in rural areas, nothing, no problem. Happily, you can stay. If the project is related to in which location you are staying, then no problem. In which location you are buying the property, then it comes under ordinal. So this is an ordinal variable. And where urban areas, where the cost will be very high. And the income also very high. In urban areas, if the rent, if you give for the rent also, the rent we are going to get very high. In the rural areas, the rent will be very low. So the rural area is given as zero, semi-urban as one, urban as two. This is ordinal. So here, what are the properties that this is ordinal? Education is an ordinal. These both are ordinal. And the credit history, good or bad. And loan status, good, uh, yes or no. So these both comes under ordinal. Okay, I'm not going to keep as common just to highlight that one I have sh I'm showing. These both are ordinals. Remaining all of them are nominals. For nominal variables, nominal encoding. For ordinal variable, ordinal encoding. If it is a binary class, there'll be no difference. For binary class, nothing difference will be there. When you are having more than two classes only, the difference will come. When you are doing for two classes, there'll be no difference. If you do whatever, no problem. Right? Finally, you are going to convert the data that is dependence and everything. Now, once the encoding is completed, now you are going to do the transformation. Now, you, as already we have observed that there is a skewed data, right skewed. Now, what I'm going to do for this means, I'm going to apply in terms of boxcock transformation. For each variable, I'm going to apply boxcock. Why is that boxcock only? Why you can't apply log transformation? Right skewed means log, root transformation, and box cock. Three options are there. Out of three options, why you have not applied log means I have tried with log. This is my final answer. This is not my practice answer. I have done the practice on different Jupyter notebook. Everything was completed. I have deleted also. I have tried first separately log. 
And when I have applied the log from 5.77, it has got with 1.09. Okay. After getting 1.09, so still it has not normally distributed. So I have tried with the boss cock. Automatically it was con con uh, converted. So I remember that, okay, boss cock is giving. So I have kept that box cock here. So by applying the box cock transformation, now if I check the skewness, both of them are almost to normal distribution, close to normal distribution. Is the point is clear? And yesterday, one of the most important point I have observed with respect to one of the student and for the student, I have given the answer yesterday itself for other students. This is also important. So here, what he has done is that particular student, what he has done and uh, it is going to be helpful for others. Now he has written the code, four lines of code in a single cell, four or three lines of code in a single cell. For example, first you have written the DF of gender. Okay. DF of gender and uh, gender, uh, whatever the gender column is there, something you are going to do modification. And after modification, he is going to store again in the gender only. In the original only, he's going to store. Okay. No, absolutely not a problem. Now what happened here is he has done in terms of income column. He has taken the income column. What are the income column is there? And he has applied the log on that. And after applying the log on that, again, he has stored the same thing in the income. Left side, there is no space. I'm writing right side. It is not the Python syntax example only. So he has stored in the right. Oh, uh, okay. Again, he has stored once the process was completed. He has stored that one done happy. Now what he has done is in terms of in a flow, he has executed the column once again. In the flow, he has executed that particular cell once again. Okay. While showing something. Why he has executed that one means first he has written this one line, first line. In the second line, what he has taken is in the second line, loan amount. He has taken the loan amount, whatever the loan amount is there. And he has applied the log on the loan amount. And he has stored this same thing log on the loan amount. And uh, now whatever the loan he has stored again here on the loan amount. Now this has thrown some error. Not, uh, this is applicant income. He has tried for applicant income and he has stored directly applicant and this is uh, co-applicant income, not loan amount, co-applicant income. Co-applicant income has thrown an error. What is the error miss? Because there is a zero now, log zero is getting infinite value. It has got some error. Now what he has done is he has modified this one to 0 0.0001. He has added something and after adding this one, now he has applied the log over this. Okay. After adding 0 0.001, now he has applied the log. He has applied the logic. He no answer. Now what he has done in the flow is both are in the same cell and he has executed the same cell one more time. Now problem was rectified. Okay. Second line was modified. Problem was rectified. He has felt like that, but he has got a new problem. What is that new problem is here the income, for example, I have done with respect to one, two, three, four, five. I have done with respect to log of one some answer log of two some answer log of three log of four log of five for each of them you have done now once again if you execute the cell what happens again this new column called as income is this one but this again log was applied re-log was applied log to log was applied if he knows that one miss okay but if he don't know that one and he is just proceeding normally and uh, when he has opened the data, when he has opened the data like this, immediately the moment he has completed, he has checked the data like this. And in this, uh, when I have opened the data here, the whatever the numbers are there, these numbers are not with respect one point. It is zero point something for the again log he has applied now one more time. He has got zeros. I asked the question, how you will get the zeros? Some uh, income is suddenly how, okay, income log transformation or box cock transformation values will be reduced. Okay, directly zeros are that much of zeros you will not get. Generally, when you will get the uh, zero here, miss when it is log close to the one or close to 0 0.001. In that case, only you will get with respect to zero. So somewhere mistake is there and I have checked means he has executed the cell two times. When you are not having the command, create a new variable and delete the war variable. When you are having the command only, 
do the same thing replace in the original one and that too you write everything in a single single in single cell you write only one line of code don't write the second line of code also okay second line of code just to check every time the data what are the modification you have done whether it has done or not you have to check miss you write that one but don't uh, without having a complete idea for example here i have done two things now if in a flow this is cell number 52 in a flow if i execute one more time what happens it will again apply the box cock on new data that is loan amount and income column again it will apply the box cock transformation once again it will apply once again it has applied then without knowing this if i continue down it is going to lead to a wrong answer then what i have to do restart the kernel again you have to execute from the starting is the point is clear now once this is done now here if i observe this loan all of them are zeros and ones zeros and ones loan amount is around six and seven and this one but loan amount term is 360 though it is a count variable also it is something different so scaling i can't apply on the loan account term i can't apply the scaling a uh, standard scalar or uh, no, min max scalar i can't apply because that is only for continuous variable this is count variable so you should not apply then what i have to do means what i have taught is to have divided by 12 so that i can convert this one to years after converting this one to years okay if you don't convert also you are getting the same answer if you convert also you are getting the same answer okay just make sure that all of them are in the same level so now i have done for example in this flow i have written the data here and if i execute means what happens you know for 12 already divided again it will divide one more time 12 if i have written the data here and if i have executed in a flow in my flow automatically it will do one more time if you execute this cell 55 cell if you execute one more time now 30 will be divided by 12 once again because that is the latest loan amount term now 30 is the latest one for 30 divided by 12 will be done is the point is clear in a flow if i do like that automatically i will get like that so proper care is important while executing right now here i'm going to take my x and my y so this is all the things what i have done is called as data preparation so encoding bringing everything onto the same scale and finally this is my data now input columns are total 11 input columns uh, uh, sorry total 11 columns are there out of which loan status is with respect to output variable remaining everything are input variable now you might ask me a question sir why in loan status also you have encoded because i'm going to apply the exit boost also now for exit boost anyways i have to do in the future now itself i have completed since i'm going to apply the exit boost if i'm not applying exit boost means no need since I'm applying the exit boost also, so I have completed this one. Now scaling is compulsory for this data or not. Now tell me what are the uh, continuous variables in this? Loan amount and income, only two. Those two are in the same scale or in a different scale? Different scale. Uh, six and six, uh, 5.5, .5, all of them five. Are you having one of them in uh, low digits and one of them as uh, with respect to high digits? I mean, both of them are in the same track now six uh, five four like this only and one of them is 1.2 1.5 like this only if one of them is one two three four one of them is 100 200 something like this then it is called as high magnitude these both are in the same magnitude five and six means not exactly same number should be there not exactly same. if you do the standard scalar also the values will lie between minus four to plus four now if you do the standard scalar also so all the values will not be the same, right? So here in this case, no need of doing the scaling because two continuous variables, whatever the continuous variables are there, those two continuous variables are in the same scale. Don't focus on the discrete count. Don't focus on the discrete categorical, only continuous variable. Sir, for example, assume that this is uh, 600, sir, some 600. This is only six something. You have to do the scale. Now, for these two columns, how you have to apply the scale? That is the question. Now, how I'm going to apply the, for these two columns scale, x dot i log of, what are the two columns? In I Index numbers, what are the index numbers of these two columns? 
this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 10. So index, index number 5 and index number 10. So I'm going to select all the records, columns of 5, comma 10. Only these two columns will be selected. And for these two columns only, I'm going to apply the scaling. So what is the code I'm going to write? Of course, I'm not going to execute. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this. Whenever the, you have to do the scaling, only the scaling has to be done only after X trine, Y trine, after trine test split only. So for example, I have done the trine test split. Now what is the code I'm going to do means from sklearn.preprocessing. From sklearn.preprocessing, I'm going to import standard scalar standard scalar and what are the standard scalar is there i'm going to write the standard scalar in a function standard scalar and now x trine x trine within the x trine data within the x trine data i'm going to apply i lock i lock of all the rows with respect to index numbers 5 comma 9 only for this only for this, I'm going to apply the fit and transform. I'm going to apply sc dot fit uh, underscore transform. I'm going to apply only on these two columns, not on the all the columns. Only on these two columns, I'm going to apply fit and transform. And once it is done, fit and transform, where I'm going to store? Again, I'm going to store in the same variable. That is this one. So right side, these two columns will be selected. After once it is completed, left side also, these two columns, it is going to replace. And similarly, X test. I'm going to do for the X test. If required, if it is required, this is the code. And what are the columns you want? That one only you're going to select. And you're going to do only transform on the test data. This is the code. If I have to do. In this case, no need only those columns which are continuous and which columns you want to do the scaling you have to select only the columns of that one index numbers of that one in this case what are the index numbers are there okay what are the index numbers in this case what are sir i don't know what is the index here less number of columns are there just open your extrain dot info in this case, x dot info. I'm going to go to, uh, x dot info. Automatically, you'll get a loan amount. What is the column index number? Five. And uh, income index number is nine. You no need to count manually one by one like this. What are the data frame dot info? For each column, whatever the index number is there, it will display. Is the points are clear? Now, once this is completed, now this, this is not necessary in my case, just you write in the notes. I'm not writing this one. I'm just deleting. So which are the columns you have to do the scaling? Only those columns you are selecting. And again, you are going to store in the same columns in the left side. This is the code, Python code. Okay. Now, in my case, I'm not going to do this. So X is selected, Y is selected. Now best random state number. Already you know how to calculate the best random state number. I'm going to calculate the random state number. And once the random state number was identified, now I'm going to use the trying to split. So try a random state number, how I'm going to identify? Here I'm going to give in the random state as I, and I'm going to apply by default logistic regression as the base model because it is a classification project. So. I'm going to apply and I'm going to get the random state number and that random state number, what are I have got? I'm writing in RS variable. I'm storing in the RS variable. That is random state number. I'm going to store in a separate variable called as RS. Okay. What are the random state is there? Now I'm going to get one random state number. Wherever I have to use random state, simply I will write RS. What are the case? RS, simply RS, right? So now here, first I'm going to identify the random state number and 70 is the best random state number. And finally I have divided the entire data using the best random state number of RS. 
data was completed with this data preparation stage is completed any doubts in the data preparation anyone has any doubts you can raise the hand and you can ask the questions yes please count variable you can even change after this uh, if you keep as the intos no problem now here the what are the loan amount term this one is there in this if one and a half year is there 18 months is there one and a half year now if you make as int automatically it will be converted as one or two so it is going to be a problem so that is the reason i have kept as it is like that so if you see the what are the unique values if all the unique values are normal like this then you can change even to int in this case you can change even to int if for example any 18 months loan is there that will be converted as one and a half year in that case you should have that uh, 1.5 also na then in that case you should not convert here i don't want these dots so to remove the dots i am converting to int is the point is clear in this case if you convert also no problem coming back here random state number and trying to split with this data preparation was completed columns are ready cleaning was completed and everything was done in the cleaning whatever the order you have followed the same thing for the new data also you have to do the same data preparation and then prediction you have to do now modeling first one is logistic regression so from sql on dot linear model logistic regression and i'm going to calculate the train accuracy test accuracy and cv for this already you know the code okay import log modeling prediction and evaluation so i'm going to do the step number 3 of sorry step number 4 of cripspdm methodology that is step number 4 modeling and evaluation i'm going to do simultaneously both of them okay modeling at the same time evaluation both of them i'm doing simultaneously okay step number 4 and 5 now here i'm going to have first logistic regression and i'm going to see the train accuracy test accuracy and cv what are the cv and the train accuracy cross validation score both are same at the same time it is equal to test accuracy everything are same almost close to each other so it is a good model so i am going to write logistic regression good in the notes which are the good models are there good 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 i will write which are the bad models are there bad bad i will write and uh, finally after everything was completed all the models are completed finally i am going to identify the best good or bad i am going to write now best i'll identify last interpretability i will do in the last next one is knn for knn what i have done first directly i have started with respect to the grid search cv that is hyper parameter tuning and i have done the hyper parameter tuning with respect to n ibus so whatever the knn algorithm i have applied in the previous classification same code i have opened there whatever the uh, hyper parameters i have considered same hyper parameters i have used here and uh, grid search cv first i have taken with respect to ni bus up to 50 only whether i have to increase or not that i will decide later first i have tried with 50 now grid search cv i have applied and after applying the grid search cv on fit on x train y train now whatever the best parameter i have got best estimator some best estimator that i am going to store in the knn and in the knn whatever i have stored i am going to predict on x train y train and finally i'm going to calculate once again train accuracy test accuracy and cv score so hyper parameter tuning and using the hyper parameter tuning what are the best model with the best model you are calculating the train test and cv now here whatever the best estimator i have got let us see whether the best estimator whatever the best estimator i have got is within the 50 or exactly 50 if it is saying that uh, n nibus is equal to 49 as the best answer then i have to do the increase in the number of nibus since i have got the tact in i no need to increase the number of nibus also for this data set i don't need to increase the nibus more than 50 also up to 50 also sufficient and i have got this one since the best estimator i have got as tact in assume it is 49 increase within the knn what are the best you can do you are trying for the same data data is locked now you no need to change the data data is fixed whatever you can do in the algorithm you do don't modify the data right 
Now coming to support vector mission. Now in the same support vector mission, first I'm identifying the hyperparameters and what are the best estimator I have got in the within the SVM, the combination of C and kernel. And I'm going to see in the SVM and I'm going to predict on the X train, predict on X test. And again, I'm going to calculate in the same way, whatever I have done previously. And this one I have got with 82 and the cross validation also 82 test accuracy of 78. So hyperparameter tuning was done at the same time, this one also done. And if you want to see your uh, SPM, what is the best one, which is the best combination. If you want to see, just, you can type here separately like this, which is nothing but C of 0 0.1 with the kernel of linear, which has given us the best estimator, right now. Next decision tree classifier, three algorithms are completed. Fourth one. Now fourth one is decision tree from here. Embedded methods also will come into picture. That is future importance also will come into picture. Till now there is no future importance. The model will not tell any future importance, but from decision tree onwards model will predict the future importance also. Now here, first I have done with again, hyperparameter tuning. And in the hyperparameter tuning, I have taken with respect to X train, Y train. So every time I have taken the grid, DT grid, SVM grid separate separately. The names also have given separately. So DT grid where estimator, estimator is decision tree classifier. Param grid is these are the param grid and I have stored in the DT grid. And in the DT grid, I have given with X train and Y train. Okay. And after that, I have identified this one. Now this code is more important for you because I have completed everything in a single cell now. So just I'm going to explain clearly first DT grid dot best estimator. I'm going to check the best estimator and the best estimator is maximum depth is equal to one with the Jenny by default Jenny. So maximum depth is equal to one only and it is saying us with respect to this. Now this after this, what I have done is future importances for the decision tree dt underscore f5 miss decision trees future importances now these are the future importance values what are the futures which are important for this one means only it is saying as one of them now here just one second here i am going to execute in the sequ first i'll separate this one okay and uh, this Okay, first I'm going to do the hyperparameter tuning. Once the hyperparameter tuning was completed, now using the hyperparameter tuning, using the hyperparameter tuning, first I'm identifying the decision tree, which is the best decision tree. Okay, that is decision tree estimator, which is the best one miss with a maximum depth of one. This is the best one. Now, what are the best one I have got? I'm going to store in the DT some name called as DT or, or the model I have got. Okay. DT. Now what I'm asking is DT dot future importances. DT dot future importances. Now for each of them, what is the futures? Total, how many futures are there? What are the futures? We are having total input futures. Just if you are having any doubt, just you can open your X train. Just you can open your X train here. In the extra line, total 10 columns are there. Index number up to 9, 0 to index 9, total 10 columns, overall 11 columns out of which one is output variable that you have dropped, remaining 10 columns you are having. Now for 10 columns, the future importances are like this, out of which it is saying only this particular future is important. What is that particular future is 8th future. It is saying that one. But here I am able to count because it is only 10 futures. But how to make that one means, here, what I have done is I have stored this one, whatever the array I have got that array I'm going to store in the DT underscore F5. Now DT underscore F5 will have the array of the each future importance array is there. Okay. Understand this point very clearly at the time I have not explained this one. So I'm explaining for you. So for each column, the important future is there. Now what I'm going to do means. I want the index number of the which future, wherever the index is greater than, uh, wherever the future value is greater than zero, importance is greater than zero. For that, what I'm going to do means, 
I'm going to use the list to comprehension. This is called as list to comprehension. Now, what is this list to comprehension? Means just uh, here, I'm applying the for i, comma, x in enumerate of df underscore fi, dt underscore fi. Now, the first question is, what is enumerate? Question number one, what is enumerate? Enumerate. What is this? What is this enumerate means? Here, what are the values are there? These are called as values. And what is the index numbers? What is the index numbers? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. These are the index numbers. 0 to 9 is the index numbers. Okay. So now these are the index numbers. Enumerate function will give like this. 0 and 1. 0, uh, sorry, 1. First one is index number comma value. Index comma value. Index comma value. First one is index is 0, value is 0. In index number 1, value is 0. In index number 2, value is 0. In index number 3, value is 0. In index number 4, value is 0. In index number 5, value is 0. In index 6, value is 0. In index 7, value is 1. In index 8, value is 0. In index 9, the value is 0. This is enumerate function. So now if you want, I can execute separately enumerate. Okay, I'm executing separately enumerate. Okay, enumerate function. In this enumerate function, what I'm going to give me is list. So now you can see the first one is index number and the value. Index number, value. Index number, value. So in the list, uh, total how many items are there? Total 10 items are there. 10 tuples are there. In each tuple, first one is index number. Second one is this. Now what I'm going to do means for, for loop I'm going to apply. For i in list. Now first i value is going to be what? Yeah, i is going to be this one. Entire tuple is going to be the i. I don't want to say complete i as like this. What I'm going to do means for i comma x. Now what happens? I is going to take the index number. X is going to take the value. I This one. Now, wherever the x value, whatever the x value it is considering, if x value, if x value is equal to more than 0, wherever the x value is greater than 0. So first it is going to take this one, 0 and this one. What is x value? x value is only this. So first it is going to take 0. 0 is greater than 0? No. Second, third, like this it is going to check everything. And wherever this one is equal to that, now what I'm going to do means I'm going to append the i value. I'm going to take L is equal to one empty list and uh, in that this L dot append of i. Now if I print my L value, what is the index number? Where the index, uh, where the value is greater than zero is index number is seven. Is the point is clear? Like that uh, if you are having in the mushroom data set also, or in the penguin data set, whatever we have executed in the dash entry, random forest, in Ada boost or gradient boost, exit boost code is one way. This is one more way. So here you are identifying the index numbers wherever the futures are greater than zero. Now this entire, what are this cell is there? This cell, how I can write as a shortcut? For this, there is a shortcut. What is the shortcut is what you are appending? I, you are appending. Copy this one in the start. Whatever you want to append, that one you stop, copy and give the space. After that, for loop, for whatever you have taken the for loop, write this one and copy this. So first one is what you have to append. And next one is for, for, for loop line. And the next one is condition followed by this. So in, this is the order. Which one you want to append? What is the for loop and wherever the condition? Now, once you have got like this, if you take this one as a list, you will get the same as. For this, this is the shortcut. For this above code, these four lines of code, this is the shortcut. This shortcut is called as list comprehension. List comprehension means a combination of list plus for loop. 
is the point is clear now for your ease understanding let's make uh, instead of this much of complex let us make still more simple example for i in range of 1 to 100 1 to 100 means not possible 1 to 10 not possible means i can't write all the things manually i can't write everything so i will write only this so for i in range of 1 to 10 if i value is greater than uh, 4 if i is greater than 4 or if i is divisible by 2 if i is divisible by 2 and remainder is equal to 0 this one i have to append in the list whatever the i value is there that i value i'm going to append append dot l dot append of i and print l now what is the answer guys this is a normal core python basic core python code 245 sorry 2468 only 8 10 will not be included okay done for this what is the shortcut we can write this entire whatever is there shortcut is what you want to append i this one you want to append space copy from here to here as it is here for i in range of 1 to 10 space if condition is there write the condition assume that sir condition is not there sir let us remove the condition now what is the answer guys 1 to 9 1 2 3 4 5 6 here also 1 to 9 condition is not there means don't write the condition condition is not there means don't write the condition condition is there means what is the condition you are having that one so wherever the i is not equal to sorry equal to sorry i divisible by 2 na one minute i divisible by 2 is equal to equal to 0 the same thing i am writing here if i is divisible by 2 is equal to equal to 0 then what is the difference above and here miss here no need of columns you no need to write the columns and everything you can bring in a single line same thing above code only same answer as this what are you are going to get for here list as two four six eight same answer you are going to get here also two four six eight this is called as list comprehension whichever you want append corner for loop condition okay this logic will be applied for only simple simple examples not with the complex if you bring the if elif 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 and that one you want as shortcut means that is not possible only for simple one this is possible right now here i am going to identify whichever the index numbers so what i am going to do means this index number whatever the index number i have identified this i am going to store in the i index name as index okay now what is there inside the index only seven now this seven whatever i'm having in the seven this uh, i'm going to take now x train underscore dt now new new one i'm creating where x train dot i lock off all rows with index number seven so only the important futures are selected and that too, what are the important futures are selected by the dash entry? I'm going to store in the separate extra and underscore DT. I'm not storing again in the extra. If I store in the extra means I can't apply the random forest because it will be replaced in the original one means I can't replace in the, I can't work in the random forest. So I have created a new variable separately for dash entry. Extra and underscore DT. Now in this extra and underscore DT, when I have applied like this, before doing this one, what is your extra? Let us see. Before to this, what is your extra? Already we have checked earlier. What is extra? Total 10 columns are there. Now out of these 10 columns, it is saying only 7th column that is index number 7 is important. What is there in the index number 7? With respect to credit history. So let us copy the same. Okay. Now I'm using this one. Now if I open my extra in underscore dt. What are the new variable extra and underscore dt? Now in this only one column is there. Automatically it has eliminated all the futures embedded method. Is the point is clear? Right? You don't need to create the data that whatever I have shown in the dash entry is one way. This is one more way. Right? Now, once this is completed, 
similarly in the x, x test also because x train and x test should be on the same shape otherwise your model was created for one column means how you can provide the multiple columns for predicting so both should be the same so i'm going to change the x test also with respect to the same and i'm going to create the model with respect to x train y train now x train is what x train dt now x train dt consists of how many columns what is this uh, dt D dt is nothing but your best estimator your best estimator you have stored in the dt so model ready for that model futures are ready now you are going to make the final model this is your final model is the points are clear now step by step for this one it is clear miss automatically for random forest also will be cleared because same thing now random forest data boost everything is same anyone any questions so first what i have done is first i have identified the best estimator first step best estimator after calculating future importance in the future importance which are the index number is the best index number i have taken a shortcut this one and using that index number i have created within the x train only that particular columns i have selected wherever the values are greater than zero that particular columns i have selected and what are the columns i have selected again using that particular columns and that particular uh, model i am creating one more time the decision entry why sir already the previous decision entry is there now this decision entry consists of 10 futures now new decision entry what i am going to create is consisting of one future only one input future only right now so this everything what i am having everything i am copying in a single cell each of them is meaning is clear right each line meaning so first best estimator that best estimator you are going to store best futures and for every future what are the futures you have got and the what are the futures index number what is the index numbers which satisfies the condition more than zero the importance more than zero and using that one you are going to create the new data this is new data and what are the new data you have created for the new data now you are going to apply this one is the points are clear everything so this everything i am going to copy in a single cell why sir why you are copying in a single cell uh, you can keep in multiple cells only now why you are copying again back to the single cell you have explained clearly now again why you are bringing back means now this everything will be copy paste in the random forest only the things i will do so this is decision tree completed right now from here to here copy paste first what is the first step i have done here guys hyper parameter tuning and identify the best model step number one write that one in the notes please apply hyper parameter tuning step number one apply hyper parameter tuning and identify the best model that is point number one point number two using your best model identify the future importances of each column identify the importance of each future using the best model identify importance of each model that is second step third step in the futures importance identify the futures from the future importance identify the important futures where the future importance value is greater than zero where the future importance value is greater than zero identify the futures where the importance is greater than zero identify the futures where the importance is greater than zero where the importance which importance future importance where the future importance is greater than zero identify the futures which are the futures and once you have identified now create the new data create the new data set create new data set with important futures 
create the new data set with important features. Now, finally, trying, trying with best model, trying with best model, best model, trying with best model and with important features. Trying with the best model and with important features. This is the next step. After training, evaluate the best model. Next one is evaluate. Evaluate your best model. What are the best model is there within the dish entry? Evaluate the best model of dish entry. That is the next step. Anyways, I'm going to share this one. But what are the points you have written now? Same logic should be applied for random forest also. Now tell me for the first step. Identify the hyper parameters, best hyper parameters. So I have done the same. Estimator, param grid, grid search, CV. And best estimator I have identified. After that, what is the next step? Identify the future importance of each and everything for every array. That is 10 columns will be there. For 10 columns, identify the future importances. And that array I'm going to store like this. RF5. Miss, this is random forest future importance. Earlier is dash entries future importance. This is random forest future importance for each of them. And from that, what is the next step? May identify the futures which are great. Importance is greater than zero. So greater than zero. What is the next step? Create the new data set. Created the new data set. What is the next step? Uh, again, build the model with the best futures and with the best model. Build the model. Build the model. What are the model? Random forest also have built the same. And do the evaluation. Same thing. Copy paste. For dish entry, whatever you have done, random forest also remains same. Whatever you have done for random forest, data boost will remain same. Add up boost, exit boost, exit boost, degrading boost. Everything will be the same. So copy, paste. Now again, add up boost. What is the first step? Hyper parameter tuning. Identify the best model. From here to here. Any question is there? If you have any question, you can please ask. Just observe. What is the difference above and below? Whatever I have done is just observe. In meanwhile, random forest will take. The coding part of random forest will be done. In meanwhile. Again, whatever the futures I have got from the Adobe boost, I'm storing in the AB underscore FI. This is the future importance of AB separately. Adobe boost has given that one. And I'm identifying the futures wherever the values is greater than zero. Importance is greater than zero. And using that one, I'm going to create a new data set. And using the new data set, again, I'm going to fit on X train, Y train. And again, I'm going to do the train test cross validation. Now coming to the gradient boost. Again, do the same. Hyperparameter tuning, identify the best model and identify the best futures, create the model. I mean, identify the futures wherever the values are greater than zero, create the data set and using your best model. GB is the best model, best one I am stored in the GB. In the best one, you are going to calculate the best futures. What are the best futures are the best futures and best model. This is the best model. This is the best futures. Using the best model and best futures, you are creating the one more model. And uh, complete. And you are going to calculate the gradient boost. And finally, exit boost. Any questions? Everything I have copied in a single, single cell. Every algorithm in a single, single cell. Instead of having in a multiple cells. And that too, everything I have given a separate, separate variable. So now if I want to see which are the best model for the best model, which are the future importances of best model miss that particular model underscore F5 if I open for each future, what is the importance I can know. So for example, out of all of them, which one is the best one? Let us see. Let us check. Why uh, sir scaling is uh, question is completed. Why we are using scoring? Scoring uh, in terms of accuracy for CV, you have to do miss for first one, four parts you are using for training purpose, one part testing. In the testing, what you have to calculate? In the test, what you have to calculate for each part, what is the test you are going to do? Accuracy, you have to calculate. 
So for five parts, five accuracies, you are going to take average accuracy. Is the point is clear? Similarly, in the grid set CV also same. In the grid set CV also scoring accuracy. Every time you have to calculate accuracy. R2 square for with respect to regression algorithms. For regression, accuracy will not be there now. If they ask you to focus on ROC with respect to ROC score, then you are going to say take the ROC underscore AUC. If they ask you for precision, then you have to take the precision. Which one they ask in the business problem? That one. In the business problem, they have asked you to build the model which gives the maximum accuracy. So this is the one. Right? Is that come done? Now, once this all of them are completed, including the exit boost, now we are going to check which are good models and within the good models, identify the best one. Let us see which are the good models. First one, logistic, LR. LR is a good one or bad one? Uh, no, no overfitting, no underfitting. CV is almost close to the test. Everything is okay. So it is a good model. And what is the test accuracy I've got is 78.3. Write this. Good model. So good. And with the accuracy, KNN. KNN is a good one or a bad one? Cross validation score and this one, no, no overfitting and almost close. Everything is okay. So KNN also good model. So KNN with the 70.75. Okay, KNN completed. SVM. SVM, uh, again, good or bad? Mm, there is no problem. So there is no problem is it is also good. Good with 78.3 as test accuracy. On the test data, it is giving 78.3. Next, coming to the decision tree. Decision tree, 82, 82, 78.3. Okay, decision tree also good. And it has given with 78.3. Next, random forest. Train accuracy, test accuracy, overfitting problem is there. So random forest is a bad one. For this data, you should not consider random forest. For this data, it is not applicable. It is not apple. It is not star mark. It is cross mark. Okay. Next, ADA boost. ADA boost uh, 83, 82, 76. 76 76.4 and 82 almost close to each other. Uh, but still almost close to each other that much of not that much of different so still you can consider as 76.4 next uh, gradient boost gb next one is uh, 77 yes this is also a good model 77.35 this is also good next coming to dash uh, exit boost exit boost also good but 77 XGB 77.3. Everything are completed. Now, out of all of them, which one is the best model? Now, now best model is decision tree is the best. Why, sir? Logistic regression and uh, SP SPM will take more time. Time wise, we know that one. So, SPM and KNN is the last priority. Never they will come in the top. Always they will be in the last. So decentry logistic. Out of these two, only one we have to sell it. SPM obviously will take time. 100% no doubt in that. Out of these two. So basically logistic regression is very good algorithm and it will do the fast now. Basically you have to consider logistic regression. Why you are considering decentry means? Decentry after future importance. Only single column it is predicting. Now if you see the fastness. If you see the time of logistic regression versus decentry of single column. Decision tree of single column will give the fast, fast prediction. Since both of the accuracies are same, now time. So here you are considering 10 columns. Here you are considering only one column. Only one column. That two maximum depth is equal to one. How much fast it will do? Sir, how you know all these things, sir? Just open. Decision tree is there. Okay, finally, you have calculated decision tree now. Now, open the decision tree. What is the final model? First, what is the final model? Let us open. This is the final model. Okay, whatever the final model is there, just open this final model. Okay, decision tree with maximum depth is equal to 1 is the final model. Point is clear. For this final model, what is the final uh, futures? What are the futures which are important miss? This one is the final futures. Extrain underscore DT is the final futures. 
in this one column only is there. So if the input data was given to you, in that input data directly using, for example, if someone has provided for you, loan ID number was given, number of dependents are given, that one given, this one given, this one, that everything was given, everything is dropped, only credit history. Credit history is good miss, credit history is bad miss, you are not eligible. Simple, completed. For this one, it is completed. Is the point is clear? Any questions? If anyone has any questions, you can please ask. Now, in the same way, now you are going to take the Kaggle completion. Now it's time for your Kaggle. And by next week end, we'll complete the artificial intelligence. In the next 10 days or 12 days, we are completing the artificial intelligence. Once it is completed, then you can take the NASCOM certification. Okay, now you complete the Kaggle in between. By end of this week, try to complete the Kaggle. At the earliest you complete. Okay, there is no rule that you have to complete today only or tomorrow only. At the earliest, whatever the possibility is there, you complete. Now Kaggle. So now we can get the multiple data sets with respect to from the Kaggle and second website is called as UCI Machine Learning Repository. This is the second website. One is Kaggle website. Second one is UCI Machine Learning Repository where you can get with multiple data sets. Classification related, regression related, cl uh, clustering related, multiple data sets. Around uh, how many data sets are there missed? 10,000 plus only. In the Kaggle, how many will be there missed? 50,000 plus only. Okay, from these two, you can have with multiple data sets for your practice purpose. You can download as per your choice. Right? Now, here uh, Iris data set is there, which is for classification. Heart disease is there, which is classification. Wine data set, breast cancer, diabetic. These are the most popular data sets, commonly used data sets. So all these data sets, whichever the data set you are interested, you can download and you can practice and you can do something as per your choice, as per the data cleaning or everything, right? Now, coming back to this Kaggle, in the Kaggle, comp Kaggle now Kaggle competition, what is Kaggle competition and how we can take miss? First thing is you have to click on the register. It is a free, you can freely register. In my case, I'm going to sign in. Okay, so you can register yourself and once you have registered, now here what you have to type is Titanic. Why Titanic miss? I will tell you the reason also. Titanic you type. Once you type the Titanic here, you are going to get here there is a word called as competition. Click on this. Okay, competition which is Titanic machine learning from disaster. This is the competition and I am going to share you this link also in the telegram group. Directly you can open. Okay. First, I'll upload the notes and first you practice the what are the loan prediction problem is there. First, you complete that one. Later, you come into the Kaggle. Whenever you are ready, then only you take the competition. Competition means not for practice purpose. This is not practice. This is some kind of exam for you. This is some, some kind of hackathon for you. This is not for practice purpose. Practice you do separately and whenever you are ready, then you take the Kaggle. Don't practice in the Kaggle. This is competition. Think as a competition wise. This is not the practice data set. Right? Now, why I have selected only this one means any day, any competition you can select which is having submit prediction. This option submit prediction is there means you can submit your answers. If this option is not there means you can't submit your answers. Wherever the option you are having with submit prediction, Oh, that one you are going to sell it. Not only this, choice is yours. Anything. I am showing one of them. Choice is yours. Now, what is this Titanic data and all these things? First, you are going to understand the overview about the Titanic. Okay. As everyone knows Titanic. In the Titanic uh, movie also we have seen. Okay. Of course, uh, long back. Now, uh, in the Titanic movie, we have seen with respect to the last at the end, uh, there is going to be some kind of disaster and due to some reason, the everything is going to have with respect to collapse. 
and in that uh, many people has died some people has survived now the question is whether the person has got survived or not that you have to estimate this is only capital competition now sir this one i am going to do and can i keep this one in my resume as a project means no this is not having real time application in the resume, what type of projects you have to keep means only which is having a real-time application like loan prediction because that is having real-time application in the banking industry, in the finance sector. Practical live application, if you want, you can see in the Paytm as of the after the class. Click on that, personal loan. Open the uh, Paytm, just scroll down. Down, there will be one option called as personal loan. Click on that and fill the details and check what happens. That is what our we have completed, which is having a practical application. This Titanic is not having a practical application. This is a computation only, just an example. Dummy data set, according to us. Dummy data set, dummy only, you have to see. Sir, in one shot, I will complete the Capstone project. In one shot, I will complete this one. In one shot, two words. Don't apply that worst logic here now. You have to separately do the Capstone project separately. Titanic data set separately. Okay, computation, computation only, capstone project, capstone project only. So complete the capstone project separately. Now, whenever you are ready, take the computation. And in the resume, you are going to mention that top 5 percentile or top 6 percentile, whatever the rank you are having, you are going to submit. The moment you submit here your answer, you can see in the later board your position. Whatever the position you are having in the later board. Every three months once, automatically the data will be deleted. After three months, your data will be deleted. Again, you have to re-upload your answer. So whatever the submission I have done. Okay, this is my last submission in, in the class only I have done. So just uh, what I'm going to do is here, whatever the file I have submitted. Just I'm going to download the file. Don't think these many submissions I have done. Just uh, for the, uh, now in front of you, one more submission I'm doing now. Every one month or two months, one batch will be completed at the time. Again, I have to re-upload. So this is my CSV file, whichever I have uploaded at that time. There is no download option. Huh? Wow. Somewhere I have saved in my system. Okay, once you have submitted, so what are the submission you are having? Just if you, once you have submitted and once you open your leaderboard position, in the leaderboard position, you can see with respect to what are the rank you are having. So as of now, it is showing that my rank as 394 in terms of, out of, out of with respect to 15,362. So you are going to just count with respect to 394. 394 divided by 1,562. Today, your rank might be this one. Tomorrow morning, your rank might be increased. Your rank might be decreased because some of the people will be deleted now. Obviously, your rank will be decreased. If some of the, if, for example, you are doing tomorrow and you have got better score than me, automatically it is going to be. Obviously, you get the better score than me because that example was done in the class temporary purpose. Okay. So, obviously, you get so here I have got with respect to 0 point into 100. If you multiply into 100, it is with respect to 2.56. Means I am in the top 3 percentile as per this. Within the top 3 percentile wise. Okay. 1 percentile means 150. If your rank is below 150, then it is called as 1 percentile. If your rank is below 300, then it is called as 2 percentile. If your rank is below 450, 3 percentile. Earlier, I used to be in the top 1 percentile. Now, it has increased to 3 percentile. In this above, more, most probably at least 10 to 15 or 20 students will be my students only than me above. Okay. Right. So, now you are going to take this Kaggle competition. Now, what is this Kaggle competition is all about? 
first you have to understand the business problem later you have to take the data in the data for each column what is the meaning also first you have to understand clearly okay after understanding each and every column very clearly and whatever the type they have considered everything you have to read then you have to download the data what is the data you have to download miss here trying data test data you have to download in the trying data you are going to do the uh, data preparation and once the data preparation was done you are going to do the modeling and out of all the modeling finally one model you are going to select now using that model you are going to predict on the test data and what are the test data you have predicted that answers you are going to upload in the Kaggle is the point is clear now as of now uh, is that okay if I continue already it is uh, two hours 17 minutes was completed is that okay uh, done I like it if you guys support like this means we can complete data science today only okay now so this is trying data So trying data, what are the trying data we are having? So here we are having, these are the multiple columns out of which whether the person got survived or not survived. So first we have to understand data clearly, proper data understand, first business problem. For the business problem in the Titanic, whatever the person has onboarded, okay? In that different uh, cabins will be there. In a train, how we are having different coaches in the uh, particular Titanic also, different cabins are there different coaches are having different different rates yes uh, with respect to sleeper coach will have different rate third ac will have different rate and this one will have different different based on their amenities with the food without food will have additional charge so here the fare will be different class will be different fares will be different you have to understand the scenario that is business problem scenario means business problem in that business problem you are having with respect to multiple coaches are there, multiple persons are there and they are going to have. So this is the passenger ID. Every person will have one, one ID, every number. So again, you are going to drop this one. Now how you have dropped in the loan ID, same way. And uh, this is the survive, whether the person has got survived or not. Yes or no. If you are getting confused, just in your case, first you replace with zero as whatever the values was given. So here you can see even that what is zero meaning in the survive? What is meaning zero of mean means no, the person was not survived. Basically it is a text data, categorical data. Survived is a categorical data, not a count data, categorical data. So categorical data, they have encoded zero and one. If you are getting confused, miss, you keep one and S and no only. You replace one S and no, and you understand first the business problem. Later you do again re-encoding once again. Okay. So G, zero, uh, that is zero miss, no, one miss, yes. Miss whether the person was survived or not survived. Ticket class, first class ticket, second class ticket, third class ticket. Now this is what type of data it is? Ordinal data. This is a ordinal data. In the ordinal data, the first class ticket is, which one is highest, first class ticket or second class ticket or third class ticket means that you are going to understand for first class ticket, what is the price? And for third class ticket, what is the fare? Clearly it says that for first class ticket, the fare is $71. For third class ticket, it is $7. So from this, we can clearly understand that first class ticket is high. Okay, point is clear. Next, once we understood the class, next one is gender. So next one is age in years. Years they have given. Next one is SIBSP. What is meant by SIBSP means number of siblings. Siblings or spouse. SIB stands for sibling. SP stands for spouse. Okay. And on board at the Titanic. Number of. What is this variable called as? Count variable. Either zero members will be siblings or one member will be count variable. PRCH. Where number of. Hash indicates number of. Hash means number of. In Python, it is called as comment. But in this, uh, whatever the general in statistics, generally will represent in the statistics in the max, this indicates that number of, number of people. If you write like this, the meaning is number of people. That is not considered as a common. Okay. Hash, that is number of parents. How many parents has onboarded? That is also, once again, count variable. You should not do the scaling on these two. 
in a flow don't apply the scalar on the entire data only on the continuous variable you have to apply scaling if necessary whether you are going to apply or not i don't know if required means only on the continuous variable you have to apply you should not apply on the remaining variables ticket ticket number whatever the ticket number is there and uh, ticket number obviously it is going to be different next fare next one is cabin cabin number or cabin name every cabin what are the cabin they have allotted and embark embark means on the which station they have onboarded the titanic first you have to understand and these are the city names this comes under nominal variable and you have to do the nominal encoding for this column for this column you have to do the nominal encoding that is dummies and you have to <laughs> next once you have created the data preparation was completed then using the data preparation again you are going to do the modeling and in the modeling now what you are going to do means here you are downloaded only the train data this is the train data and you are having the test data next one is test data how to download the test data means here you have to download the test data click on the download okay select the data and click on the download and it will be downloaded now if you observe the test data the output variable will be missing remaining everything will be there but output variable will not be there except output variable everything will be there now what type of cleaning you have done there for example fill with respect to mean you have done what is that mean value some number will be there now that number you have to replace here you should not again fit for test data never fit test data only transform only transform never fit on the test data no recalculate on the test data assume test data was given only single record then what you are going to do same way you have to think okay now here every uh, now you are going to do with rest in the for example training data you have dropped the name column here also you drop the name column there you have dropped there you have done the encoding for this here also you do the encoding there you have done the scaling here also you done the scaling there whatever you have done in the training data test data also you have to do same so what you have to do simultaneously you have to open the jupyter notebook two jupyter notebooks in the first jupyter notebook train you have to load in the second jupyter test you have to load cleaning you have to do simultaneously in the both of them in the both the jupyter notebooks you have to do the cleaning simultaneously and once the cleaning was completed now which type of cleaning you have done in the train the same type of cleaning has to be done in the test okay now once that is completed in the train in the train data we are having only the output variable is available since output variable is available we can know the train accuracy we can calculate the train accuracy but test accuracy we can't calculate test accuracy will not be there so we are going to confirm based on the train accuracy and cross validation score only using these two we are going to confirm here okay no test accuracy and which of the train accuracy test accuracy is almost close and where the cross validation is the highest one that particular model you are going to use and using that model you are going to predict on the test data on the test data you will get one answers and whatever the answers you have predicted the y pred predicted values that array you will get now that array you convert as csv file and csv file you have to load here is the points are clear everything one by one for example assume that in this uh, okay in this i want to predict now for example this is the one and which i have predicted is this is the one last one is this one now let us copy and now i have got these are the predicted values okay for the final model i have got the predicted values what i am going to do means first i will convert this one to pd dot data frame i am converting this one and along with the column names is equal to columns is equal to survive survive is the column name in the dt okay now pd dot data frame and uh, what is the name i have given columns okay list uh, i have forgot the list okay columns is equal to survive 
So survive column is created. Now, once this data frame was created, now what you are going to do this, you are going to store as the ANS answer data frame name as ANS. Now, what are the ANS is there? ANS dot two underscore CSV. And this you are going to store as ANS dot CSV or I'm going to store as SRK dot CSV. Okay. Now automatically the answers will be converted as a CSV file where it will be stored in my working directory. So once I execute like this, now I'm going to get here SRK dot CSV file will be created. If I open this CSV file in this values will be there. And I'm going to remove this column. What are the first one is there that I'm going to remove only the answers I'm going to take. So either you can remove here or you can write here itself index is equal to false. If you don't require the index index is equal to false. Automatically index numbers will not be there. Only answers you'll get. And that answers you are going to upload in the CAG. Your predicted answers you have to upload in the CAG. CSV file you have to upload. Is the point is clear? So please practice and try to complete the Kaggle at the earliest. And in the resume, like uh, how we are having the movie names tag words for your resume, your name below to that down is your tag is Kaggle top five percentile. That is going to be your tag. In the resume first first page opening opening on the top, your name will be there, right? Obviously your name and uh, left side address or something, something will be there here. Your name below to your name, top five percentile in Kaggle. Don't write Titanic. Only Kaggle. Top any, any competition, any one. Nah. It is not Titanic only. No need to specially mention that I have worked on Titanic. Okay. Simply you can write top five percentile in Kaggle. Now, once the Mac, uh, NASCOM certification was completed, NASCOM certified data scientist. Top only, opening, opening only, it should be there. That is your tag, your brand. Below to this, Microsoft. Once Azure is also completed, Microsoft certified. In next one month, we have to complete all these things. Right? Once artificial intelligence is completed, NASCOM, after SQL and Power BI, Microsoft. My SQL, my uh, Power BI, and uh, with respect to Azure, with respect to Microsoft, right? That is going to be your tag in the resume. Starting, starting, top only. It should be there. Is everything is clear? Yeah, done. Completed. Class was completed. Thanks for your wonderful support, guys. For yesterday and for today, both of them. Right. So I'm going to upload this one. Please practice and uh, please show the same dedication. How you have shown in the today's class in the same way after the class also practice. Done. Thank you. Thank you all. Yes, please.